a comprehensive look at trends, fund profiles, and more in exploring ETFs. Now there's an ETF that is linked directly to the internet of all things. Our ETF research director, Nina Mishra, is going to tell us more about it. But these themed ETFs so far this year have been increasingly popular mm -hmm. uh, with uh, investors. A lot of different ones have come online. Yes. Uh, we discussed sometime uh, a few months back mm -hmm. uh, that a lot of these new themed ETFs are being launched this year because easy ideas are already taken. Sure. So ETF providers are trying to do something different. Right. Get a little more creative. But in that process, you look at some of these that come out and you say, gee, who created this thing? <laughs> some of them make sense, some don't make a lot of sense, and some are plain, weird, yeah. as you mentioned. Yeah. But this is the one which I believe makes a lot of sense. It provides investors an opportunity to invest in the Internet of Things, and these technologies have immense growth potential in the coming years. And that's what this is called, the Internet of Things. Yes. Right? Okay. Uh, in simple words, the Internet of Things, or IoT, mm -hmm. links the physical and the digital world. Okay. So you could have an ecosystem of a number of devices that have chips or sensors embedded in them and that are connected to the Internet. So they basically can receive and transmit data constantly and they can communicate with one another. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned, this is an area with immense growth potential. Mm -hmm. uh, Cisco estimates that by 2020, uh, we'll have, IoT will consist of 50 billion connected devices. Wow. And according to a McKinsey report, uh, these technologies could add up to 11 trillion in economic value by the year 2025. That's a lot. And uh, on this slide, I have this chart from the McKinsey report that I mentioned earlier about the settings or areas in which these technologies could add a lot of value. Mm -hmm. uh, now, most investors must have heard about how these technologies could be applied in smart homes where all your household appliances could be controlled by your smartphone, or your bed could start your coffee maker, or <laughs> your, and the heating system yep. in your car, or uh, you could uh, do your washing, um, laundry, and drying from while you are at right. work. But there are ma many other settings where these technologies can add a lot of values for McKinsey. In factories where sensors could optimize the maintenance of uh, equipments and uh, ensure the safety of workers. Mm -hmm. Or in cities uh, where technologies could be used for uh, delivery of efficient services. Um, like in uh, New York, they recently rolled out some smart uh, trash bins and recycle bins, uh, which notify the collection agencies uh, uh, when they are full. Or these uh, technologies can be used in human bodies, uh, sensors and wearables could monitor your health and wellness on an ongoing basis and you know, detect any life-threatening illness on um, really early. So there's wide application. There's wide, wide application. Or sometime in futures, we could even have uh, smart roads, which could communicate with smart cars and notify them of traffic conditions and potential hazards in real time okay. basis. All right. So this uh, ETF, yep. the Global X Internet of Things uh, thematic ETF, the ticket, ticker is SNSR sensor. So this is a, an index? Uh, it's an ETF based on this. Based on, okay. It's, it's a new ETF. It's launched this week. It's the first ETF uh, based on internet, on the Internet of Things okay. uh, theme. As of now, it has 45 companies which can potentially benefit from the broader application of these technologies. Mm -hmm. uh, it follows a modified market cap weighting scheme uh, with a single security weight capped at 6%. It's not very cheap, charges an expense ratio of 68 basis points. Uh, so on this slide, I have the 
in the, uh, industry breakdown. Mm -hmm. And uh, as expected, uh, semiconductors have the highest rate of almost 35 percent, followed by electrical components and equipments and commu communication equipments. Mm -hmm. And this is a breakdown of types of companies in the ETF? In these, yeah, in these industries. Okay. What about, you've got a country breakdown as well. Yes. So this has a lot of international exposure. Almost 47 percent of assets are invested in international companies. So definitely expect more volatility compared to your large cap U.S. ETF. Okay. Uh, and what are some of the top constituents here? So some of the well-known companies like Mobileye, uh, Garmin, and uh, Cypress Semiconductors, these are among the top companies. Now, I would like to remind investors that it's a very new ETF, mm -hmm. and I think it has a lot of potential. Uh, so they should watch it for some time till it gathers some assets, at, at least 25 million in assets, and starts trading in uh, decent, sizable volumes, and then, then they should consider buying it. Give them some time to assess the risk-reward portion. Yes, exactly. Portion. Till, yeah, till it gathers some ad ad assets, at least. So as the Internet evolves and uh, changes over time, do you see more of these types of ETFs linked up to the Internet potentially coming out? Yeah, definitely. As the technologies evolve, and we are going to definitely see a lot of uh, you know progress in this area. So definitely yeah. new ETFs being launched. Okay. Let us remind you, thank you for that information, it's pretty interesting. Let us remind you that there's more ETF information on our website, zax.com. Get on over and you can link to it using the Funds tab in the top toolbar that takes you right to the ETF section. With Nina, I'm Terry Ruffalo.